I did say several weeks ago that I was going to uh, replay one of my old messages from 1982. <laughs> That's a long time ago. I was a lot younger then. I was a lot more sprightly. <laughs> Praise the Lord, but nothing's changed. It's just closer now to the rapture than what it was in 1982. Praise the Lord. I hope you're having a good week. So I'm going to play this tape. Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? And we'll find out about that. Also, I think on this tape, I haven't heard it for a long time. It talks about a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. So that's what you have to do this week. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's run to the tape. Let's hope you can hear it. If it's too loud, just turn your volume down. If it's too quiet, turn your volume up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See you next week. you today. You, you know it. God has said it. You know there's not only just one sister who feels unloved, I believe all of us feel unloved. We should have all been standing in that ring this morning. I really feel that. We all feel unloved because the world hates us and it gets to us. The world, they just loathe Christians. We are vile. We are unclean in their sight. And we need that love and it it really gets to us sometimes. You've got to learn to live with it, don't you? The rejection. I don't want you out of my sight. You know, years ago, we went up north for a bit of a tour, called in Jiglong for a while, did a little bit of work, then went on. And I got a job with some guys laying concrete. They just rolled up and said, uh, you got any work going? They said, yeah, can you trowel concrete? I said, oh yeah, I'm good at that, right. So I grab a trowel, a trowel and concrete. And... Uh, Kept me there for a while, at Dampier it was, you know Dampier, used to sleep there in all the bunks and after work all these guys would get together, you know, and they'd have their beer and light each other's fags and, you know, tell the old, old story sort of thing. And you see, that wasn't, that wasn't me, that wasn't my scene, you see, I, I was the scum of the world. 
You see, these were the good guys. So they thought, you know, just doing their own thing. So I'd have, have to go up in my bank and all I could do was read my Bible because I didn't have any newspapers to read. <laughs> so I'd, I'd open the Proverbs, I'd always open the Proverbs, and I'd just read Proverbs, you know. But these guys, and Ecclesiastes of course, these guys really started to get cheesed off with me. I would come and sit with them, I wouldn't drink their beer and shout them a few jokes I suppose, and they wouldn't like their fags. And they, they thought to themselves, this guy's got to go. Because he's not one of us. I certainly wasn't one of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I wasn't one of them. And there comes this hatred that we're going to pick up right now in 18. If the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. And so the hate that they had to me was so real, they said, Chloroform, we'll give you the sack. I said, right, give us me dough, I'm off. So I got me home, I got my money and headed back to Perth. Praise the Lord. It's good the way the Lord's been, goes with his people over the years and teaches us things. Bless the Lord. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. The world is very good at hating, hating God's people. It hated Jesus Christ. The world hated him. They hated him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Who will we let go? Will it be Jesus or Barabbas? Crucify him. Crucify him. The world hated him. And they're hating you. They're hating you now. Right where you are. And if they're not hating you, perhaps you've got reason to, to question why they don't. Why don't they hate me? Because they will. God's word says it that they will. If you stand for Jesus Christ, if you uh, serve him, they are going to hate you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. These guys just love to sit together and just, they're one. You see, but to bring in someone else who can't speak their, the same language, because we don't speak the language of the world, do we? We speak a heavenly language, we speak cleanliness and purity and uh, righteousness. You see, but the world doesn't speak that. They're foreigners. They speak filth, smut and junk. We are not of that, uh, in that world. And verse 19, if you were of... If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. We are to be hated. And this is why God says to love. Love one another. We must love. We must have fellowship one with the other. Now, what was this intense hate? To appreciate love and to understand that we're looking at hate, its, it's enemy, its opposite, to give us a, a deeper understanding. Because I believe God wants to have a deeper understanding of His love and what it is and what it's doing in our life. Because remember, God had these two emotions. Jacob, hath I loved, and Esau, hath I hated. He hates unrighteousness. He hates a man. Remember that that Esau was the firstborn out of twins. He came first and Jacob was a few minutes or something not far behind. And uh, his, the birthright belonged to him. I don't we'll have time to, to look at that in Genesis, I think it's 27, chapter 27. The birthright or the blessing that comes to the firstborn belonged to him. Then he was out and uh, starving and really hungry and he sold his birthright for a mess of pottage. And he gave that to Jacob because Jacob always wanted it. He, he longed after that blessing and he sold it to him. And then through his mother, Rebecca, and through various circumstances, he was able to, to uh, by tricking uh, <coughs> Isaac, by putting hairs. Uh, Esau had hairy arms and Jacob was smooth skinned and his father was nearly blind. And so they tricked his father by putting a goat skin or something and lied to Isaac. And Isaac blessed him. 
He imparted the blessing. Esau was out chasing venison. Must have been hard to catch, but he came back pretty tired and pretty cranky, I think. And when he came in to find out that his blessing had been lost, the blessing, mind you, that he had swapped for a mess of pottage, he'd given it away when he was hungry for, for practically nothing, just some lintels and bread. He'd given that away. That speaks of the backslider, the one who belongs to Jesus Christ. They have the blessing, but they give it away. They say, I don't want it. It's not worth anything to me. But then waking up too late, once the blessing has been given, it's and, well, it's given, and he can't take it back. And so he was terribly upset. He was very annoyed. God knows what it is to love and to hate, and he hates those who will despise what he's given them. God hates hates the backslider. He loves them, and yet if they continue on their way, will not come to Jesus Christ and repent and come back to their to the blessing in Jesus. They will ultimately receive damnation and the hatred of God forever. Jacob hath I loved. Jacob lo- Jesus loves you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus loves his people because we have come into the birthright, into the being born again experience that's in Jesus. And we are staying under that canopy of his blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord is speaking to, a, to someone who's been considering backsliding. As I waited before the Lord last week, I saw one who was... In fact, there was more than one who had this within their heart that the way is too hard and I'm, I'm thinking of giving it up. I'm thinking of, of not really continuing in the ways of God. This is what the Lord showed me. And would begin to entertain a, a spirit of backsliding where I think I'll stay away and just work my way out the door. But you know, God is saying come this morning because His love. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He wants you to come right into His fullness. Remember that Jacob's blessing was tremendous. It was a, he ended up a very rich and a wealthy and a prosperous man. And you and I are going to be wealthy and prosperous both now and forever. Hallelujah. We're going to be prosperous in our health, in our, in our mind. We're going to have a mind that is the mind of Christ. What money can buy that? We're going to have peace. We're going to have joy. Everything is going to go well with us because of the blessing of Jesus Christ. And if it's not going well, you know, I'm the sort of person who thinks that if a thing gives trouble, I want to know why it does. If something's not quite right, well, why not? And uh, I think we should be like that. If we're not in the blessing, if we're not receiving the good things from God that are in His Word, I want to know why. And so do you. And this is one of the reasons. Red Adair was what you call a troubleshooter. Extraordinaire. He was a troubleshooter. Fire put her out of. God's word is a troubleshooter. And when we're not receiving the blessing, we can find out why not. And here it is. I believe this is where some, even myself, often would go wrong. We're not loving one another. The power of love, the health that there is in loving each other, peace of mind, the victory of loving our brother. Now why did they hate Jesus so much? We're looking at love, but we're looking at hate. To understand love. Why did they hate Jesus so much? There in verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. This is why Jesus was hated. He came and he took away the cloak. He 
took away their clothes, and they were there stripped bare. Their righteousness, the robes of their self-righteousness were taken away. Jesus came to take away the, the good works. Jesus came to take away all those things that we would dare to stand upon. And there we would be before Jesus, bare. And you know, many resent that. Many resent that. You know, I had a dream last night. The Lord, it was a, from, straight from the Lord. And the dream was simply this. It was out in a boat in a large lake going around. Someone fell overboard and they had a large coat on. A large coat. And they couldn't swim. And they were going down. I don't know whether I jumped overboard or someone pushed me. <laughs> Got an idea I jumped. And I, you know, I've done a bit of life saving in my time. When I was a kid, we went to our life saving certificate. And I know that if a person struggles, don't mess about, knock them down. Because they'll, they'll bring you down. I'll give you a look like this. Uh, panic. This person wasn't panicking, so I didn't knock this person out. I said, oh, well, you come with me. They this big coat. And it was wet. And it was heavy. And I was swimming like mad, trying to get them to the other side. And would you believe the other side of the shore was steep and slippery? I said, get your coat off. Get your coat off. Or we'll all sink. I don't know whether they got their coat off or not. I woke up. I reckon I'd had enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the Lord's saying. There's someone here this morning. There's a person here this morning and you're sinking. You're going down. And you're going down with your cloak. Your big cloak of self-righteousness. I'm as good as the other bloke. And you probably are. You might be better. But you're sinking. You're going down. The Lord is saying through his word, get your cloak off. Get off those good intentions. Get off those, those new ideas. Get off those things that you think are going to save you and just trust in me. And I will save you. Sure, the other side of that shore is slippery. It's steep. Just came back to me what the word was when I woke just before I woke up. We are gonna make it. Hallelujah! We are gonna make it. I've forgotten all about it. We are gonna make it. We are. Aren't we? Are we gonna make it? Of course we are. Let's say it. We're gonna be on that other side of that shore. Bless the Lord. So he came to take off the cloak cloak that often sometimes would dare to be wrapped around even God's elect. We, we feel cold and unloved. So we say, well, we'll have a little, perhaps a cardigan on. A little bit of the world perhaps won't do us any harm. I mean to say, you know, it doesn't hurt anyone. Yes, a bit. We move to that area and then we say it's getting colder here. I'll perhaps I better put something bigger on. We have a little bit more of the world and what it has to offer. And before long we have the cloak of darkness. But Jesus came to take away that cloak and for this reason they hated him. They hated our lovely Jesus. But now they have no cloak for this sin. You cannot hide from God. God's love reaches down and it lifts you. It takes you and then it builds you. It saves you. God's love is a saving love. Just there in 15, we don't even have to turn over the page. Verse 13. Greater love, love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you. He gave his all. Jesus laid his life down for his friends. For us. His love was of immense. 
value. His love was eternal. His love met our need when we needed it. Wonderful Lord. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 3, it tells us, He that covereth his sin will not prosper. Remember that scripture, learn it. If you've learned that scripture, you know that one. He that covereth his sin will not prosper. We need to prosper in spiritual things. God expects us to grow. I often say to my kids, I don't want you kids to be spiritual dwarfs. I don't know if they like it that much. But that's what you can be. You can be a spiritual dwarf right down here and you just never grow. You just never mature. You never blossom out. You never bring forth the perfume because of a problem. Because we haven't got that love of God within our hearts. Now if we haven't got that love, you know, we'll never come to maturity. If we haven't got the love of God within our hearts, we will never be mature. We'll never bring forth a perfume. Jesus brought forth a beautiful perfume wherever he went. They said, all thy garments smell of myrrh and of aloes and of cassia. The perfume was overwhelming and yet they hated our lovely Jesus. One who was to lay his life down for us. They hated. Romans 4 verse 7. Blessed is the man whose iniquities are forgiven. Whose sin is covered. We don't want the covering of of the big heavy coat. We take that off and put on the covering of the robe of his righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ by faith, by repentance. Hallelujah. Fully dressed. Fully clothed. Baptised in water. Filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be totally immersed in God. Hallelujah. Believe there's some this morning who would have not gone that step further in being baptised in water and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, everyone else was getting filled in the church, and the young people, and I was about last on the list. In fact, I wasn't really that keen on going. I thought they got a bit carried away. You know, all these people there carrying on there. Mind you, I've heard it for years, all this speaking tongues and that, but I did, wasn't really that keen on it. They said, oh, you better come, you know, you, you know you, you're not much good, you certainly need it. <laughs> you know, the tactful way that the church people talk to you. <laughs> now or never, mate. <laughs> so they pushed me in the door. <laughs> you better get down the front, boy, you need... You need the spirit. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> I did need the spirit. Hallelujah. And the Lord baptised me. I didn't have to tarry. didn't have to come back for a second try. Bang. When you've got it, you've got it. Haven't you? <laughs> Poor Pastor Lovell, I reckon he would have been glad if he had bought a pair of earplugs because I just went really high. You heard me loud voice when I get excited, haven't you? Well, this was the special. <laughs> Hallelujah! And I still reckon those cracks in the wall in old uh, Glendale Street was caused by when I said, Hallelujah! <laughs> well, people sold their houses out and built flats. They couldn't stand it. <laughs> With a loud voice, Hallelujah, we declare the praises of God. Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs> I don't know what I said then, but I certainly you just want to get the glory to see what it was. Hallelujah. It's all on record. It's all there. Everything we say is on record. Hallelujah. It's all put down. You think we were pretty good with tapes and so on, but Jesus got it all recorded. It's all written down in the book. Every word. Everything we say, it's all there. 
Hallelujah. There certainly were some praises that day. Totally immersed. The full robes of his righteousness. I remember when I got baptised in water. Poor old Dickie Bain said, you better boy. And uh, I said, oh, I've got no, no white bathers. He said, well I have. <laughs> You see, sometimes we need encouraging and the Lord honours that commitment. Sure, it was made under pressure. <laughs> I won't tell you about when I got saved. <laughs> uh, they didn't even heat the water for me. Fully clothed with his blessing, with his righteousness, Esau hath I hated, Jacob hath I loved. You are children of Jacob, of Abraham. You're the seed of Abraham, Isaac yeah. and Jacob. Of the seed of Jesus yeah. Christ, you are the firstborn. You, are, you have the blessing, you have the birthright, the eternal birthright in Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sin is covered. Do you love Jesus? Of course you love Jesus. We love Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Let's say it. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. They hated me because of my works. Not only was it the cloak that Jesus stripped from them, but it was because of his works in verse 24. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done, verse 24, among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Because of the works, great works that Jesus did, they hated him. They hated our Lord. John 10, just, just come back a few pages, something there. Verse 31. They hated Jesus because of his works. The world will hate you because of your works for Jesus Christ. No gold medals for, scripture, for, te for teaching scripture. No gold medals for witnessing. No great reward as far as this world is concerned, giving out tracks or speaking the word for Jesus Christ. But uh, the world will just hate you. You are you're a queer. There's something wrong with those people. This is how the world looks on us. And you know, it gets to us sometimes, it hurts us, it grieves us. But God gives his love to us. When we come together, God pours his love and he says, You are mine. You've been bought with a price and I love you. We are to continue in the works of the Lord. Let's see what happened here. John 10, 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For, for which of those works do ye stone me? Which work? Come on now. Which work are you going to stone me for? What work is it? Is all this... Is it the, the works that I've done, the healings, the way I've healed the sick, the way I've helped those who are in distress? Which work? Is it that man that I said, stretch forth your hand, that was healed on the Sabbath day? Is it that one? What work is it? I want to know. Jesus wants to know what the world had against him. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work... The Jews were extremely cunning. And you know, the old human nature is very shrewd and it's very cunning. And we have to watch it because it will try to get out of any situation. And you can see the craftiness right away. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not. Can you see the cunningness in there? Oh, we wouldn't do a thing like that. But they had stones. They were ready to throw them. But for blasphemy, ah, we'll move on to another trick. But for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, it is not written in your law, in your law I said, ye are gods. Can't go past it without telling this little story. 
this dear old lady. She used to work at the zoo, I think her name was Mrs. Freeze. And she used to quote this scripture out of context. And she'd say when people were feeling a bit down, does not your Bible tell you that ye are God? And that was her favourite. That's the only bit she knew in the Bible. But if you look it up, go on, and it says, but ye shall all die like men. See how we can take scripture out of context. Does not your Bible tell you that ye are gods? But you shall all die like men. So we've got to finish off the scripture. And this is uh, verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. If he called, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken... Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemous, because I said I am a son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. We are to do the works of our Father. And this is why the world will hate us. This is why God said to love one another. To balance, to bring us into that place of, of harmony with him. God is love. And to understand God, we have to, to find that love that's in Him. And to be in that love continuously. God is love. We are in God, so we are love. God is love. We are in Him. And that love is to be manifested and shown to the world. But if I, verse 38, but if I do... But if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works that ye may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. The great works, the miracles, the good works that Jesus did. If you don't believe me, Jesus is saying to them, look at my works. Look at my works. Does that not prove that I am from God? Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. The world hates us. It's hard to take at times. And we bring the, the hatred of the world sometimes into the church. And that hatred has to go. It has to go. And by God's Spirit, it's going, it's gone. We are to love each other as our brother Charles King on Wednesday evening. And as we sang that beautiful chorus, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And as we went around and laid hands and we just sang it for those who weren't here. Beloved, let us love one another, you know the chorus, for love is of God. And we just laid a hand on, on several, whoever, and it was just beautiful. See, God can then move in healing power, in revival, in whatever we ask, because His Spirit is there. When we bring in the Spirit of love, the Spirit of God comes, and it lifts and encourages us. I know that you've got no doubt that God wants you to love each other more and more. And that only comes by loving Him more and more. You cannot say, right, I'm going to try and love my brother. He's got plenty of faults, but... You know, I'll do the best. It only comes through a new relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the key. We have to come back and we say, Yes, Lord, I, I was sinking. That cloak was heavy. But you came and you, you put your arms around me. I was nearly ready to drown, as a matter of fact. And I was, and I was going down and you came and you... And you just love me. Because you said in your word that greater man hath no love than this. And the man laid down his life for his friend. And you would have drowned and brought me to shore rather than for me to drown. That is the love of God coming and being shared abroad in our hearts through Jesus Christ. There was this boy at school and this was when people were very poor. And he used to eat other boys' sandwiches at lunch. 
because he never had any lunch of his own. When he got home, he didn't have any tea and he never had any breakfast. He was starved. And so they got a bit sick of these, this boy, or they didn't know who it was, eating the lunches. So the headmaster said, the next boy that we catch eating someone else's lunch is going to get the cane really hard. So they set a trap, and sure enough, this poor little boy who was starved, he just had to come and take another lunch. And they caught him red-handed, eating the sandwiches. So they took him up to the headmaster, and as they took his coat off, his back was thin and his ribs were sticking out. You could see the, the poor fellow was undernourished, but the word was that he had to take the stripes. He had to receive the punishment. Then another stronger boy, stouter, with a good ribs didn't stick out. He said, I'll take that punishment. I'll bear the stripes and let this boy go free. And so there was this love come forth in a practical sense. And that boy escaped the punishment. You know, that's what Jesus did. We were guilty of sin. We had broken God's law and the punishment was our due. But Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross. He was nailed to the tree and he was <coughs> took stripes for our healing. By his stripes we are healed. Body, mind, spirit. <coughs> we are healed. He took those stripes for us because he loved us. He loved us so much. And to love one another, we have to love Jesus first. If you want to love your brother more and you find it hard, and I know you do, we all do from time to time, but the Lord is, is warning us so very clearly this morning to love one another is to love Jesus more and thank him for that glorious free salvation. Love it, let us love one another. These things I command you, that you love one another. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Keeping the commandments of, of God. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love, even has Jesus. So he looked at hate, he looked at love. Esau, have I hated Jacob, have I loved. You are the firstborn in Jesus Christ. You're born of the Spirit of God and He loves you so much as you understand it more. Help us, Lord, to understand it. Help us to take it in. What it meant to thee, the only one, to die on Calvary. Praise the Lord. Okay, I hope you're all accepted the Lord as your own personal saviour this morning. I hope all your doubts and fears have gone. I hope this healing virtue come into your life. I hope you've got rid of the cloak. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.